Nathan Webber and Sean Rees are our, our next speakers. I'm going to try and under-introduce them uh, because I, I, this is such a remarkable story uh, that I run the risk of actually repeating many of the things that, um, that you're about to talk about. So, in brief, um, Nathan and Shaw are designers at Purpose, and the agency gave its designers, I guess the whole team, uh, the opportunity to suggest a company that might benefit from the attentions of uh, the creative mind. Um, Sean suggested an organisation uh, called the Maguire Programme. Maguire? Maguire. Uh, I guess you guys will clarify that. Um, uh, which, uh, whose purpose um, uh, Sean and Nathan, I think, will explain in, in greater detail. The agency then committed to give uh, whichever organisation was chosen by, uh, by a show of hands, uh, it would allow those who had suggested the organisation at the time, as part of the agency's day-to-day -day business, to work on, on the project. Uh, Sean and Nathan's idea won through, um, and they proceeded to start work with the Maguire programme. Um, if this is a conference about authenticity, I have to say, I've been reading about their, their story, and it's, a, it's very much a work in progress. Um, if we think about of authenticity of purpose, uh, this is an example where that is, is utterly and completely at the centre of, of what Nathan and Sean are doing. Now, I guess you guys haven't really talked about this very much, so um, I'm fascinated to learn more about it. The challenges that are at the heart of this project will become clear to you as well. It, it really is quite a remarkable uh, uh, story, and I'm um, thoroughly looking forward to hearing more about it. Uh, Nathan Webb and Sean Reese. Hi everybody, um, sort of done me out of the job there, I'm not going to it, but we'll run through and go through it anyway. Um, I'm Nathan. And I'm Sean, good morning. Um, as you know, we work for a design agency called Purpose. Um, Purpose specialises in brand and communication, and um, we work, we've been working for about 10 years uh, in total. Um, across those 10 years, we've done, um, we've worked on a whole uh, range of brands, um, from large sort of companies to really small sparklers. Um, we also work on, you know, like on a wide variety of media as well. So um, at one end we'll work on, we traditionally worked in print, but we also work a lot in digital and even experiential. Um, um, but at the centre of everything we do, at the heart of all the design that we do, we always have to stick to one principle, and that's that no matter what design we work on, it always has to have substance. Um, and to ensure that we um, get a good mix of projects um, into the studio, a good do um, balanced diet of design, we find it a good um, rule of thumb to ask yourself three questions. And if it ticks one of those boxes, then you're pretty much good to go. Um, the first one is, does it make good business sense? Which is okay. Uh, the second one is, does it open doors to new opportunities? Now the third one, which is hugely important, and this is one which we're going to talk to you about today, is, um, is it good for the soul? Is there sort of, is what we're going to do, is it, is it going to touch you and you know, make you feel really good about what you're doing? And that can sort of take a few different formats. Um, you know, sometimes uh, you can just be really enriched by the design you're doing because the design is great and it feels good to be doing some nice design. Now the other one, which is actually a little bit more important, is um, sometimes when you're putting out to society the, um, that something good, because using your skills and your skill sets to do something uh, a worthwhile, something a worthwhile cause. Um, and as you also know, uh, as we um, talked through already, um, in order to keep a check on that, that last point, to make sure that we're getting enough of that in the studio, we always um, annually create a wish list 
when we get everybody in the studio, uh, not just designers, but project managers, um, account handlers, production team, everybody, um, put together uh, three ideal clients or projects that they'd like to work on. Um, and we get them to jot it on post it, and uh, we stick them all up on the wall, and it looks a little bit like that. Um, and so once we've got them all on the wall, we get everybody to put their case forward for the people that they want to work with. And, um, and once everyone's put the case together, we all have a little sticker, and we start to stick it onto the post-it. And uh, by democracy, we uh, work out the company that we'd like to work for. Or, and then once we've decided on that, um, we go hell to leather to try and work for these guys. Um, last year, as you know, Sean put forward the Y program. Um, and I think it's pretty much safe to say that last year won by a bit of the landslide. So the program is a speech treatment program for people who stutter. Now, I have stuttered. I've stuttered all my life and I've gone on the Maguire program which has taught me this new technique which helps me to control my stuff. And I've been on the program for 10 years now. I joined in 2003 and the program's given me so much. It's Quite a contrast to how I spoke before. Is the volume on this? Tell us your name, please. And the full parcel address, please, Sean. It goes on like that, it goes on like that, and on like that. You could probably tell that that was excruciating. I, I really had to struggle to, to say a single word in. So, if I was to tell you that this program has totally changed it's totally changed the whole of me and my life. I would be not exaggerating in the slightest. It really has had uh, such a positive effect. So I, I was very keen to try and give back to a program that's given me personally so much. So I, in this, Ten years I've been involved in the program. I've since become a primary coach on the program, which involves me going back to programs and helping the people coming through and talking about the experiences that I've had. So, is it really a big problem if you have a speech impediment? This it's just talking. Right? Purely. Well, just... Um, just 1% of 
of the world's population is afflicted with such a But still, across the world, that's a lot of people. The irony is nobody talks about this. It's kind of a bit of a taboo, you know? People feel awkward, a bit ashamed, embarrassed to bring this up. So it goes ignored. No one brings it up, no one talks about it. It's brushed under the carpet. People who stutter can feel imprisoned by their own speech. And stuttering is often compared to an iceberg. The part people experience, the part people see, is a very small percent of the wider problem. The big problem with stuttering is the part that's beneath the surface. There's so much more beneath the surface. And this can lead to people avoiding a lot in life. So if you had anything specific in your mind that you'd like to communicate, but if it's a difficult word for that person to say, then perhaps you would change that word and communicate a totally different message and end up making no sense at all. I'll give you a personal example. I'm, I'm quite partial to a pint of Guinness. And I'd be at the bar and before the course I, I could never say Guinness. It would just get stuck. It would be stuck in my throat. I couldn't say it. And to spare everyone the embarrassment, I would order a drink I didn't even enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> and I would go, go away holding this drink I, I don't even want. <laughs> And the shame, because I, I knew what I was doing. And this is a trivial example, but if you apply that thinking across all examples, all speaking situations, across life, then it becomes a problem. And that can lead to a real feeling of isolation. As if you're in this on your own. And in this moment of isolation, who do you turn to? Well, I, I've tried a lot of different therapies. I tried speech therapy. I even tried hypnotherapy. And they, they kind of helped to a degree. But the problem is that after you come off of it, you have a small increase in your fluency. Brilliant. You go out, you start speaking, you encounter a bit of turbulence. Shit, I'm, I'm on my own. I'm, I, 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 fuck, oh no. <laughs> Your speech crashes because there's no backup support. And that's so frustrating. You, you can't imagine ha having a taste of fluency and then having it taken away from you. Surely there has to be a better approach out there somewhere. So imagine going on a program where everybody involved in this program have first-hand experience of everything that, that you have experienced with your speech. 
But more importantly, they know what it takes to overcome that and conquer his speech. Well, in a nutshell, that's the Maguire program. Now, I think it's worth mentioning that the Maguire program is a non-for-profit organisation. So needless to say, um, their funds are very, very minute. There's not much money coming in at all. Um, it also means that the people who are working within the Maguire program are um, volunteering. They're spending their own time, their spare time, um, working on the Maguire program. They've all got full-time jobs. So, so needless to say that there's not a huge amount of time for them to be able to focus on communications with the Maguire program. It's also uh, worth noting that the Maguire program is a worldwide organisation. They've got um, programmes in about 11, 12 different countries, I believe. And um, because of the nature of, of this, they, um, each regional director, they're called, in the different countries, are working in sort of silos because they there's no communi there hasn't been a huge amount of communication in terms of their visual language amongst uh, between one another. But as a program, as a as an organisation, they really work together. So this ended in quite a disjointed looking field, quite a disjointed communication for the uh, Y program. There's about seven different logos for one organisation across the world. They have about seven or eight different websites. There's no sort of, kind of unifying message here. It's sort of lacking the professionalism that, and the, the reputation of the programme really has. So what we've got, we've got a great product, a great reputation, but there's no brand, no common message, and we're really, really lacking consistency, and quite importantly, no money. So this starts to define the brief for us, really. It's like, well, we're communicators, we're designers. Um, what can we do to them? Well, we can definitely help them communicate better. That's, that's one thing we can do to them. We can help them with their brand. But if we're going to do work for their brand, it needs to be practical. We can't just give them something they can't use. So we needed to design a brand that is relatively cost-effective to deliver, very easy to deliver, because we've got all of these um, regional directors in different countries that are volunteering their own time so they don't have a huge amount of design knowledge. Um, we'd also have to, because of the lack of money, any work that we did, we would have to do for free as well. And I say free, I mean it's not just free. We, what we're getting back is that, that soul thing, this soul enriching thing that we wanted, that, we, that I talked about at the beginning. Um, I guess what we wanted to do really, like how the McGuire program has done for so many people, was we wanted to give them their voice. So we were keen to really talk about the positive impact the program has on its members. So before the programme, people would feel as if they were trapped, isolated, afraid, had this stutter which was imposed on them. They can't do anything about it. I've got this problem. Woe is me. But when you enrol on the Maguire programme, you're you're now treated as an athlete now. An athlete working and training at getting good at this sport of speaking. It's a change of mindset. It's about trying to transform this fear that you associated with speaking and for possibly the first time in your life, actually enjoy the process of speaking. 
transforming all those negative speaking situations that have haunted you, turning them into positive ones, having good memories. So it's all about going beyond, beyond perceptions, limitations, beyond stuttering. So, and this informed our graphics, how we approach everything. That was our core thought. So, it was about going out of that trapped speech to delivering freedom of speech. That's the positive impact of this program. And we created this really impactful graphic language just quite pure two colours, a cool identity very typographic, illustrated created this kit of parts that allowed them to create cost effective communications cheap to produce, easy to produce the speech bubble allows them to talk about this positive impact in its communications, in its campaigns. And on the courses, it can help to talk about the content of the course in its printed materials. And in the logo, it informs our logo. It's about speech about communication and in the negative space there's a hidden M which is a reference to the Maguire program and how it acts as that anchor to your speech but it's always hidden it's always in the background always there always present So, a key part of what we wanted to do was to give the people on the program ownership of it. So, on the business cards, we created this template that people can customize and put personal information on there and take a part of the program away with them. The speech bubble also allows the people on the program to tell their own personal stories. Because everyone's story is different, including mine. And this comes to life across a host of materials, all sorts of different touch points, from screen to print, all sorts of different things, including even Christmas cards. So, again, it's about this positive impact. Before it might have been hope, 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 but now it's holiday greetings. You're in control now. Bit naff, <laughs> We also delivered a really clear kit of guidelines. So, so that in the future, it gives them a really clear and easy to apply identity to allow them to expand and produce additional materials and communications. And on the courses, they have a lot of screen presentations where they talk about aspects and techniques that are taught on the course, so we, we had a look at them to try and make them more immediate, more effective, more impactful. And this is a course which happened a couple of weeks ago, and well, and sorry, Gareth Gates is a course 
instructor, and he was instructed on that course recently, along with a guy called Chris Cooksey. And this is how it comes to life practically on the courses. A really important part of the course is about doing the very thing that you're most afraid of. And for people who stutter, that's public speaking and even talking about the fact that you have a stutter. So, and that's an important part of the programme. And even people on the programme actively try to expose themselves, expose themselves to challenging speaking situations, kind of like Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park. We've done that a couple of times. So we're at an early stage with brands so far, but what we've done is we've, um, with, with the work we've done, we've been able to give the McGuire program a voice, a unified voice that they need to be able to move forward and be able to produce the communications that they need. But it hasn't just done that, actually. It's, we've also seen to have activated the community. Um, already we've got people really interested in how, taking this, the work that we've done and taking it further. We've got um, an amazing web developer, Barry McGee, down sat in front, who's finally helping us um, produce a unified global website that will make it really easy for the regional directors to update and really easy for any new student who wants to go on the course to be able to get on the course. We've got people interested in creating a brand film as well so that we can tell the wire programme in an emotive way. We've got people producing apps that when students are at home they can help them with exercises that the course teaches. We've even been talking about breaking record as well. I mean, this is early stages, isn't it? But the idea of having a sort of global, getting everybody within the wider um, community to work together to create like the largest sing song or something. Might do that across the site or something. And also speaking here today, we're really sort of chuffed to be here talking to you. And um, that's, it's been a great opportunity for us, isn't it? To, to show you what we've been doing. And so who knows where this could go? I mean, this is, we, we get just by giving them the, the tools and creating that starting point, you know, we've created an opportunity that, that this thing could just keep growing. And just to finish on one sort of last point, really, um, like I say, what started as just a single post-it on the wall, like a little, a little seed of good intention, sort of has grown into something that is a really, really worthwhile cause. And I think that, it's worth sort of looking at that and saying that, you know, we've got, as communicators, as designers, we've got this great ability to communicate. And if we can put it to good use, then, you know, amazing things can happen. Thank you.